having the representative of the general manager of Legal State Environmental Protection Agency, that is the person of Mr. Motosho. I'm sure we all know him. Let's give Mr. Motosho a round of applause. We are not here yet, please. Let's jam our hands together. Mr. Watershaw, briefly in 10 minutes, will be discussing with us the impact of pesticides on the environment and human health, a quick guide to safety measures. Please, all our presenters may not have to use the slides. We all have encyclopedias of pest control here sitting down. They can sit down, close their eyes, and they're telling us something that we want to see here for the next one hour. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. I'm going to start on the controversial notes. I want to catch your attention. All pesticides are hazardous. I don't know if somebody had that. All pesticides are hazardous. That means that all pesticides can cause harm. Means that all pesticides can alter your biological, alter the biological population of your body. That's the caveat. If not used the right way, all pesticides have the ability to destroy, be it human, be it animal, be it environment. Remember that we're trying to kill something. For people that come to my office to register or uh, obtain a, a permit for pest control, I usually ask a you know, few questions to gauge their level of experience. Uh, because if you are not experienced enough, you're going to cause a lot of harm before you know what is happening. We have had a situation where somebody went to fumigate carry out pest control where he didn't need to use chemicals. Now an exotic dog died. Thank you can for bringing us bringing up this topic, human or pesticides on environment and human health, impacts of pesticides, the quick guide to safety measures. If we're going to be using chemicals and pesticides for pest control, then we have to be safe. I'm going to run through some things that we need to do, but before that, we need to know some of the impacts of pesticides, chemicals on the environment. Of course, basically, the soil, the water, the air can be polluted. We are targeting ants. We are in agricultural, um, you know, agricultural pest control, we are targeting you know, ants, we are targeting rodents. Don't forget that those, that chemical you are using will seep into the ground. Rain will fall, fall moisture will fall, make it go down into the ground, water bodies on the ground, make it go to the water bodies, it mixes with the fishes in the water bodies. Fish are not catch those fishes, they end up at the water. Our madams go to the water, they buy fishes and bring them to us, all the family eats fish, eat crabs. These things bioaccumulate in the human bodies. Sometimes we have issues with our health. Everything a pest control officer does can be harmful. You can destroy lives while you are trying to better lives. Everything we do here, pest control is a noble profession. It's a profession that tries to ensure that humans live in a sustainable manner. It's a profession that tries to ensure that the quality of life of human beings you know, is sustained. It's a profession that tries to ensure that the agricultural produce that we have I mean, it's not cut down, that food security is ensured. That is pest control. 
However, if you do not do it the right way, you're going to be in trouble. Now, apart from pollution issues, that means to non target organisms. I've said that before, including birds, wildlife, fish, crops. Also, layer yeah, depletion is also you know, a part of uh, pest control, if, if not done properly. There are chemicals released into the atmosphere, and that is why when you do the job, when you fumigate or utilize chemicals, of course, people have to stay away from that environment for a period of time. Now, don't forget that apart from the chemicals that are set to that, some disseminate into the atmosphere. Some chemicals utilized in pest control also contribute to global warming. Now, there is no global sitting, there's no global conference in the past 10 15 years that world leaders will not discuss the environment. That world leaders will not discuss global warming. And I want to tell you that the fact has shown that improper pest control, utilizing chemicals, is one of the negative impacts. Global warming is one of the negative impacts of improper pest, pest control. Now, turn to human health. Research has shown that utilization of pesticides in non regulated manner has caused elevated incidences of human diseases such as cancers, Alzheimer's. Parkinson's disease, asthma, bronchitis, autism, diabetes and obesity. Yes, diabetes and obesity. Respiratory diseases, organ failure, kidney failure. You have your house fumigated because you think ah, you're always scratching your body. Something in this house, it's apart from the rats, apart from the rodents, roaches, you need to fumigate. That's what you think. However, it is not every time that you need, need to utilize chemicals in getting rid of products. There are a lot of things you can get rid of without utilizing chemicals. If we as professionals cannot sensitize our clients to the right things to do, and because of the money that we're going to get from them, you know, we do the wrong thing, then the consequences will directly or indirectly catch up with us. That is part of the global world. It's affecting everybody, not just one person. Okay, so what are the safety measures? The first thing that I would say the professional needs to do, you need to educate your client to try prevention first. Always try to do research on how to prevent a situation. It is not enough to go and do this thing every three months and collect your money and go. Some things can be prevented. If you advise, counsel, or consult your clients in the right way, they understand better and they appreciate you more because that shows that you are a professional that is worth your soul. If what they are experiencing do not need you to carry your fucking machine because you want to show that I've got the machines, I have infrastructure, and you go and spray chemicals in a three bedroom flat that probably does require some baits or probably some sulfurs to chase away rats or some rodents. Ensure that you try prevention. Two, ensure that you use pesticides correctly. How many of us know what MSDS means? MSDS. Can I see hands? MSDS. Okay, so every chemical, every chemical on the surface of the earth has MSDS and meaning is a material safety data sheet. That MSDS has information on all the safety issues of that chemical. MSDS gives you directions on what to do at every point in time. What to do when things go wrong, how to apply the right way, what to do when you have when you're in trouble. When to apply this, what chemicals can be used indoors, what quantities can be used indoors, when it has to be used outdoors, what quantities can be used outdoors, what chemicals are agri chemicals, what chemicals are household chemicals. I mean, people go around using agricultural chemicals for industrial It is not right. Because even though they will kill those things, they will leave impacts that will affect everybody, affect the environment. You know, so we need to use pesticides correctly, utilizing information. Now I want to talk about professionalism. I graduated from 
almost 30 years ago. And it is proven that if you finish from school and your education finishes there, you do not keep on researching, you do not practice what you learned, you do not study more, you do not expose yourself to current global practices in your field. A maximum of five years, you're no longer a professional. You just have a certificate. The moment you stop reading, the moment you stop researching, the moment you stop practicing, you're no longer a professional. I'm sorry if this sounds insulting to some people, but that is the basic fact. The field of pest control is dynamic. It changes every time. I can tell you that COVID-19 brought a lot of changes in pest control. Not only in health, not only in environment, globally. So I'm going to run through, I have two minutes left. You need to dispose of leftover pesticides and containers properly. That container that you are throwing to the bin, an illiterate human can carry it and go and put palm oil. That happens. Put palm oil and go and fry fish, and sell fish, and some of their children, not our children, go and buy the fish. And eat dietary. And eat banned chemicals. Or just eat chemicals that are not banned, but are used, but are not supposed to be ingested. And that bioaccumulates and causes organ failures. I hope we are aware that we, NADA has a list of over 30 chemicals, pesticides that are banned. Am I right? If you are a professional here and you don't have that list, or you don't know the chemicals in that list, then you are a danger to the environment. I'm sorry to say. If you do not know banned chemicals, banned pesticides, and you are a professional, you have clients that you service periodically, then we are in trouble. That is the truth. Just go on, go online, you will get these chemicals. Don't assume that twice as much is better. Don't think that, ah, let them smell very well so that you know that I have done the work here. It was, it's, it's not right. You're going to leave more impact, negative impact, than what you intend to do. And it doesn't show professionalism. Don't transfer pesticides to other containers. It is absolutely dangerous. It's hazardous. Don't say because ah, I didn't finish this chemical, let me keep. The next time I have a job, I'll just pour a little bit more. I mean, chemicals are used to be, they are, they, they are required to be used with dilutions. If you don't keep to those dilutions, we are in trouble. Lastly, sir, always protect yourself when applying pesticides. You need to be properly protected. Somebody talked about somebody that went to do a fumigation and the fumigated against the direction of the wind. Of course, you will run into trouble without using personal protective equipment. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Once again, let's give Mr. Watosh a round of applause. I want us to know that this is one of the most important uh, um, sections, the area of tackling, or let me say generally tackling quackery. We have to address pesticide abuse and understand the impacts on the environment and on the health. Um, before we proceed to the next uh, speaker, which is going to be online, I think Dr. Kevin Bota is online right now, uh, waiting for us. The question I have, because uh, all of our offline facilitators will have the questions for you, then the others can ask questions. Uh, my first question is going to be to uh, Mr. Motoshaw, uh, the infiltration of counterfeit products in the management and control of pests has become a source of worries to the big players. In as much we have put so much effort into control regulations, but as much as we do this, when we are moving on the road, when we are going to our homes, in the traffic in the evening, we're seeing a very handsome young man telling us to our face, you know, as professionals that, bros, come and buy this. <laughs> yeah, you know, 
and they operate without any, they don't even feel bothered about what they are doing. They don't feel like they are doing anything wrong. Personally, as a moderator, I would like to ask, what role has the agency played regards these guys that we see every time on the road? They are operating without anybody checkmating them. Um, the association has been doing so much in the area of awareness. But the association may not have the legal backing to just go on the road and start picking up people. What are the agency that has the backing of law? What is Masepa or what has Masepa done about this roadside guys? Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, Masepa was established in 1996. And the agency has evolved to what it is today. Uh, I believe Lasepa started a regulation of the pest control sector in the late 90s. You know, and um, where the agency started from was awareness and sensitization. Now, uh, I'm not sure we have companies in Nigeria that produce pesticides. The pesticides we have are imported pesticides. We try to collaborate. We don't have access to the ports as a state government. You know, however, we know that NAVDAC is very active at the ports. However, because Nigerians are, well, some Nigerians are very, I will not say smart, they're very corny. They go around and mix up these chemicals in such a way that it is cheaper and will guarantee more money. And these chemicals they rename and push to markets without addresses. Now a lot of times my sepa goes to draws roadside, goes outside to catch as many as we can. However, you would agree with me that you cannot catch a lot of people by just going around half as because they don't have one place that is staying. So what we do is we liaise with market women, we liaise with organizations, we liaise with associations, and we are continually educated them. For example, there are people that utilize some of these pesticides to control ants in beans, rodents in grains. You know, we have a unit that goes to markets periodically to sensitize against this. They use some of these chemicals to ripen foods sensitize against this as well. However, what we continue to preach is that this job is not for government alone. It's not for PECA alone. It's an issue of awareness. It's something that we all have to do. If information spreads, people will not patronize those parts again. If they don't patronize those parts again, they will be run out of the market. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you once again, Mr. Watershaw. Now, one very straight question as we prepare for Dr. Kevin Bota's session. Um, our height, guys, I'm sure we're ready for Dr. Kevin Bota. Okay, so one very straight question to Piso Abari on what you've spoken about, which is rodents. Personally, I have a testimony to share. Um, anytime a customer calls and they said they want the issue of pest to be tackled and they call us, well, I've said it, this is not the first time I've said it. If they say, oh, please, come and handle the issue of pest. And you know, when they say, come and handle the issue of pest, they didn't mention it, that's what we wrote it. Personally, I'm always very happy. Because to me, the test of a true professional comes from the fact that you can suppress rodent control easily. And unfortunately, most of our clients don't understand this. They just assume that when you come, everything we Die. You understand? So you spoke about the very, I say you handled a very sensitive session. So I'm going to ask that uh, when it comes to rodent control, uh, the essential areas of knowledge is the understanding about rodent behavior. It helps in the control. So I would just want you in just two minutes maximum to shed light 
on how rodent behavior helps the professional in rodent control. Thank you, sir. So, um, in a very short while, for just 10 minutes, we're going to be having Dr. Kemba uh, She's going to be coming up on to tell us on the principles of integrated pest management, tools for disease control, and global health. Um, sir, are, are you ready for us? All right. 
please, can we project our own screen? When she's done, then Dr. Issa Adam will be coming on to complete the session once after all for the online session then, because uh, we have limited time. All right, as she's coming on board, let me introduce her to you. Dr. Kemabota has a first degree in agricultural biology, master's in agricultural entomology, and a doctorate in entomology, which means that she's currently an associate professor in the Department of Zoology in the University of Lagos, and has previously worked as a senior lecturer in the same department. Her area of specialization is applied entomology, insect conservation, and pest management. She has written so many journals and ever researching to be mentally updated. Dr. Kemabota is from Ogo State and she's happily married with children. Please let's give her a round of applause. Good afternoon, ma. Please. Okay. Please, your life. Good afternoon, Dr. Kemabunta. I feel so bad that I'm not there with us. Yes, we can hear you. I'm now. sure that when I have a son here, I can scream, he said, say hello to them. Say hello. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're at the conference, and uh, I'm really sorry I couldn't make it. Well, first of all, uh, of that, I want to go straight to integrated pet management. Uh, I have just a few minutes to spend, I think it's the first to take for maybe a year or two, the whole session. So I want to see how I can reduce it, but give more examples that I know will be of what to work. Now, what is integration? I hope you can hear me. Yes. I can hear you. So, yes. Now, integration is a bonus use for multiple methods to control food first or pest in the past, it's any organism detrimental to humans that can be mutant, can be can, can kill, or can do whatever. But I would say, I would give that definition to that the pest is any organism that is found in the wrong place. So if you are a human being who is found in the wrong place, then you are a pest. So we have them. No matter here, we are all, uh, we, we are all. Uh, to fulfill certain purposes in life, I like the food, food chain or the food web. But when you are now going out of your own area, for example, the termites, the termites help a lot. Without the termites and other biodegraders, I'm sure we have issues. But when the termites now leave maybe the crops or leaves with the wood that is in the forest, broken down, and comes to the house. You come and feed on your on your door and your and your cupboard, then it becomes a pest. Now we are looking at different pests, microorganisms, which we could have is no more a pest. They say COVID virus is not pest. Well, to me they are still pest. You have the weeds, you have the invertebrates, and so on. But the major ones we have, the major ones we have are the roaches. Especially the German cockroach that has grown resistance to almost all our chemicals. They have BB. You don't say, Do you have a pet body in your house? You say, Do you have a BB in your house? Because the BB is a reimagined insect pest and is found in, within with the, both the rich and the poor. You have it everywhere. You have it in warehouses, you have it in offices, you have it in your homes, you have it in your hotel. That the hotel I stayed in, you know, I got them, the first thing I did was to check if they were bed bugs there. I didn't want to take them home because the eggs were not that. It takes so much to control bed bugs. I'm sure we all know that. Okay? And there's some people who use formalin. I don't advise it. Because the person using that formalin, and the person you are using it for, you are destroying them. So, it's not too good. But there are certain ways you can do to control the bed bugs, but it takes a long time. And then we have the termites, the mosquitoes. Of course, you know, if you find mosquitoes anywhere, that means if 
there, there are mosquitoes in your house. It means there are some container that is containing some pumps, containing water that some bucket, some tire that you don't use again, and you keep them in certain places. And then the water stays in the rain falls, and then they, they grow. The, the mosquitoes develop. It is also known as the scorpions. The scorpions of course are found in, in wet, dark, and full places. So, if they are found within your bathroom, you see one scorpion, the baby scorpion, then of course you meet the mother scorpion and it's there because she carries her babies everywhere. So, once you see that thing, it means there's still something wet in the mouth and there's something that look on that toilet back. You will see really putting your hand there, you see wet. And then you see they cannot see, they are blind. You just touch them and hit them and kill them. Because they can be uh, very, very dangerous. Then we have immunity and sense of peace. These are started coming out now as tests. And then, of course, the recent ones are the snakes. I remember somebody called me and said they have killed three snakes in his house. So I said, Three snakes, he said, Yes. I said, Then you have no deaths. You have no deaths. He was looking at me. He said, Yes, he sees one, one around. He said, Well, if you see one, it means you have seen many. Yeah, yeah. Or if you have poultry, the snake will come there, there's nothing attracting it. It's like the young man who's in your house every day, you have to find it there. Hello? Alright, this is a bit of technical challenge. While we are waiting, the IT team to fix this. I think uh, we can have Dr. Oguso. Uh, any question we have based on what Dr. Kemakuta has spoken of, uh, as, uh, uh, at least uh, she has addressed, we're going to come to that in general question. Like I said, we have uh, limited time. Briefly, let me introduce Dr. Oguso to us. I'm going to read a short profile. Because if I have to read out his full profile, we will be here till 9 p.m. Dr. Chidi graduated from the University of, of Ibadan in the veterinary medicine in 1979. Honestly, I was not born there. <laughs> he briefly worked in Kano State Ministry of Agriculture and Development and then joined Unicamp Nigeria Limited in Nigeria's subsidiary of BIAG Germany. Dr. Oboso has served as the Secretary of Lagos State Branch of Nigeria Veterinary Medical Association and at the national level, a national secretary, later he served as a council member of the Great Profession on Veterinary Council of Nigeria two times. Dr. Oboso is married to Mrs. Ibichoke Omokoredo, which means he is a Pan-African, an Igbo man married to a Yoruba woman. Now, the truth is that Dr. Oboso is going to be talking to us about one very major area that we all deal with, that's cockroaches. I'm sure that we all know that sometimes it's more difficult to do with German roaches than oriental cockroaches. Do you agree with me? I'm sure we have one or two persons here presently that are dealing with cockroach issues. Abi, so in the next 15 minutes, Please let's be attentive. We're going to get something very important about cockroaches. So if you have any question that centers around any issues related to cockroaches, please keep it. You have an expert here to talk about that. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, the mighty cockroach is an interesting pest. In fact, among all pests, it's one of the most common seen, seen in many areas that unexpectedly uh, the, the untrained eye will not notice. That means you need to be well trained to locate where to catch them. Uh, first and foremost, the, the cockroach has to be tackled very, very carefully. Uh, many eateries 
that in all over the places, you have them abiding there. Many uh, food industries scattered all over the places, you have cockroaches, serious cockroaches. And we have graduated from the normal African cockroach to now the Asian cockroach, the German cockroach, and the American cockroach due to our uh, uh, massive importation from those areas. Uh, the, the cockroach, first of all, we are talking about how to control it. I'm not going to bother you with the morphology of cockroach or much of the lifestyle, lifestyle or, or, or uh, the bio uh, history of cockroach. Let us look at how we are going to control it. Now, you have, first of all, what does cockroach need in your house to come in? It needs water, it needs food, and it needs shelter. The, the cockroach, especially the one, the one we call German cockroach, um, the the uh, Latera germanica, uh, that's the German cockroach. It is very tiny. And over a hundred can gather in one small place as if they are socializing. So, uh, you, first of all, you, you have to be able to locate where they are. A trained person coming into a room where there are cock where cockroaches are uh, inhabiting, you will perceive the other. If you are well trained, immediately you come where cockroaches are uh, staying, you will perceive the other. That's they have an offensive order. Just like some type of rats also have some massive order. Now, uh, to locate them, there are nocturnal animals. You might come to your house and say, I don't have cockroaches, I'm not seeing them. Because you are not nocturnal. In the, uh, when the day is gone, you on your light, you stay in your rooms. When it's uh, dark, you off your light and sleep. Except when the population is exploding, when they start flying about it, it's a flying time. Uh, there are some that fly, there are some that just crawl. So if it is a flying type, maybe they'll fly a pet on you on the bed, then you say, oh, so I now have cockroach in this house, so I get to work. Or if, you are, if it is a madam that opens some aspects, some parts of the, uh, um, uh, the fridge, then they will notice in some corners, you see them batting about. That is how you notice. But first of all, if you are called to do a pest control, uh, you need to have your touch light. When you go with your touch light, you carefully search the corners and those areas, the crevices, the, uh, uh, all the areas they are prone to habit. You will search in those areas, you will detect them. If you don't detect them, you might assume they are not there. And the, 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 the German cockroach is very small, like I said, and it's very difficult to destroy. You see, this cockroach has been able to prepare itself. Even those bits that contain uh, 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 glucose or let's say uh, carbohydrates as an as an attractant. When you put when you put those things, some of them have now developed resistance to those to uh, anything containing glucose. So they will not touch it. In fact, it even helps them to feel better. So those are things that, like has been mentioned here, uh, 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 pest control is a very dynamic uh, uh, profession. Many things change. These these insects. They are able to multiply so many in about two, three weeks. The generation of cockroaches come and come. That means if you use the chemical within a short time, if it's not properly used to exterminate them, within a short time, uh, another, pop another population will have come in and they will have gotten in some element of resistance. Keep, so they keep on passing it around the gene, and before a short time, they will be used to whatever chemical you are using. Now, so, like I said, if you want to identify where they are, you have to look at crevices, you 
you have to look at uh, behind your fridges. And uh, they like cold and hot places, cold and warm places. So you search for all those areas, then you'll be able to locate them. When you locate them, you have now, you have to plan how do I kill them. Usually one method alone will not destroy this hardy insects. So you have to organize some methods of getting rid of them. Um, so many, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't prepare proper notes. It's more or less okay. Uh, I got my notice very late, precisely uh, this morning that I'm going to talk on this insect. But it's interesting. Uh, so we go. So now let's look at uh, the major areas. Assuming, like I said, you look at them in a, in a house and you want to get rid of them. First of all, you have to track where they are. When you've gotten where they are, then do you use bait or do you use uh, uh, do you use uh, bait or do you use uh, other means chemicals? Uh, chemicals have been enumerated, but I'll show you some of these chemicals, some of these insects, had insects have gotten resistance to them. But that does not mean we can get rid of them. We succeed in getting rid of them by using a multiple of applications. When you use the bait, basic control methods. Uh, we can use uh, uh, gel bait. These are the ones which are prepared and uh, they will attract them. When they are attracted, the insecticide in them will kill them. Um, so you look for the you look for the uh, where the traffic is very high, and then you place your 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 gel bait, or you can also use the bait stations, which will position different areas, which will also attract them and will also give you an idea how the traffic load is in that place as respect to the coverage. Then. Among the chemicals, one of the commonest chemicals is boric acid. Boric acid looks very simple and looks very common, but it's very good. Uh, one is safe for man, is safe for eggs, but I must warn you, uh, don't let the water come in contact with the flower. You can destroy your flowers if you use the boric acid carelessly. Uh, if you use the boric acid, you can affect them very serious and it kills them almost immediately. Other insect, other insecticide, um, uh, what you call the uh, uh, fibrin, uh, fibrin, uh, fibrin, uh, fibrin, uh, fibrin, uh, uh -huh. yes, yes, sorry. Uh, it's, uh, it's more modern, it's an, uh, it's an, uh, uh, it's a modern chemical which, uh, which is uh, uh, being used and they compounded in many of the uh, attractants. So when it's attracted and comes in contact with this chemical, it will be there, they are destroyed. Saflotrin is also another good product which is used in forms of uh, Use in form of uh, of uh, uh, either fogging or spraying, but like we said, it doesn't make sense spraying the entire place. You get the areas where they are and concentrate on those areas. 
when they concentrate on those areas, you get rid of that. You see, many people, uh, one danger of applying wholesome fumigation, that is uh, applying your fogger or applying your sprayer, is that you contaminate the entire environment. Once the entire environment is contaminated, human beings walk there, um, your pets walk there, and then some other insects uh, will avail the same space. So what will happen is that uh, the insects gradually, even though it may not be uh, 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 meant for them, will become, uh, they will become, they will become resistance, they will grow resistance to that insect. So it is always good to know what is what pest you are going for, what uh, method of application are you going to use, so that you are more or less specific in your application for all those things. Uh, um, uh, silo halotrin, delta metrin, uh, and uh, tetra metrin. Those are common. Chemicals people are using, but other modern ways people use uh, pheromones. Uh, that is the uh, insect hormone. What does it do? If you use insect hormone properly, and the one that will attract the cockroach, it will attract it, and then you now deal with it. By uh, that's what uh, they use in terms of uh, people who use bait. So when they, some of them use the insect hormone, the insect hormone will attract this insect and then uh, they become uh, destroyed with the insect itself. The days of using that globus and dog that is virtually gone with the hardy with this hardy insect. It can kill that is maybe if it's a new breed of um, uh, 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 cockroaches, you can kill maybe 40% of them. But if you continue using that locus, I can assure you, they easily get resistant to it and it will not work again. So it is always good to apply a series of methods in order to be able to uh, determine what best to use in destroying your coverage. I feel that is not enough. If you actually appreciate the time that you spent on the presentation, please let your man hands to the right